Hey guys, what's up? Today I'll be showing you how to create the ultimate Figma button. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing you're gonna do is create your text. In this case, I'm gonna create a placeholder text. Just typing the word button, semi-bold. Let's make this font size 16. Then I'm gonna tap Shift A to create an auto layer around it. And let's make the height of the button fixed and make that 44 pixels because according to usability rules that's the minimum size of the top target this is mainly for mobile because the size of the because of the size of the fingers of users but uh, this will also create a more usable button for a desktop experience because it's more visible and for the width of it we're just gonna leave it as hot contents but i'm gonna give it a margin of 24 okay and next let's give it a fill i'm gonna go for blue for the fill and white for the text always make sure to check your contrast so i'm gonna use this plugin named contrast you're gonna directly select the text and you, as you can see it fails all, all the accessibility tests so i'm gonna make this blue a bit darker and there you go we pass all the double a accessibility requirements so let's keep it like this the next thing i'm gonna do is give it a subtle round on the borders it's Go for four pixels okay the next thing i'm gonna do is explain you guys how master components work i tend to use this always and you've probably seen it in some other video but i'm gonna go over it again so what a master component is is the most complex version of your component which you will use as a base to then create other components so that if you need to make a change that affects all the other components that were created uh, as childs of that you just have to make the change on the master component and those changes will be inherited by all the children components. It's going to be a bit clearer as we move forward. What you need to keep in mind to create a master component is it has to contain all the possible elements that any of the children will contain. Because as you know in Figma, you can remove from components but you cannot add new stuff to components so this one has to contain every possible element that any of the children will contain in this case to show you a very simple example i'm going to create a small icon library of containing just three icons just to demonstrate to do that i'm going to use the iconify plugin Okay, let's say we have this small icon library. I'm gonna click on create multiple components and then combine them as variants. I'm gonna name this icon. This is now a component with these three variants, happy, sad, and neutral. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is clicking, directly selecting one of those, selecting my button and then hitting paste and the auto layer will be automatically applied to it i'm gonna change its color to white and there we have our basic button so to further explain like the the master component is if at some point you you think you're gonna need uh, an icon at the right of the at the right side you're gonna need to have you're gonna, i'm gonna copy and paste this icon and put it at the right side then when i clone this button i just i i just have to remove the one at the right or the one at the left uh, because i'm gonna i'm not gonna be able to add them at any point so remember guys for the master component you need to include all the possible elements you're gonna use in the future but i'm just gonna keep my left icon for this example okay the next thing you're gonna notice is because this icon is sourced from this icon set which is itself a component with variants this is gonna automatically create an instance icon so you see if i double click this I will be able to go to this drop down menu and I can pick any of the instances of that icon. So make sure to source your icons from an icon library. And if the icons you have are not part of an icon set like this, or meaning a general component with variants, uh, you can just create it yourself the way I showed you before. Okay, now everything is ready to create our master component. I'm just, I'm gonna select our button, I'm gonna create, I'm, I'm gonna create a component out of it, name it, name it button and now this being our master component i'm gonna set aside i'm gonna put it in here and now i'm gonna start creating my actual components the first thing is to create the different states 
In this case, I'm going to create four different states. This one will be active. This one I'm going to make it hover. So I'm going to recommend you switch from RGB to HSB, which is hue, saturation and brightness. This will allow you to edit the brightness value individually. So I'm going to decrease it. It is on 85 currently. I'm going to set it to maybe 65. Um, a bit more. Let's set it to 55. Yep. Then I'm going to create a pressed state. Um, which is when the user actually clicks. This is gonna be more of an instant thing to give the user feedback that the action they have carried was actually registered. So we had 55, so we had a brightness of 55 on the hover. Let's make this one something like 35. Even we can go, we can go even to 25. This is gonna be very instantaneous, so it's not, a, a, this is gonna be very instantaneous, so it's not an issue is if it's too dark. So for the disabled state, I'm just manually gonna pick one that works for me. Let's do this one. Okay, next I'm gonna select all of these and duplicate them so we can create our no icon version and it will be as simple as selecting the icon and deleting it. But you can actually see when you do this from a component, it doesn't actually delete the element, it just hides it. You can always have access to it in the side menu. Then I'm gonna clone this again and create our secondary button, which I'm gonna do by uh, having only a stroke and not a fill. So I'm gonna copy this color code, give it a stroke, paste that, hide this, and change all the white for our main color. And I'm gonna do the same for each of these. Now I'm gonna duplicate the stroke version and hide the icons. And now we have our primary and secondary buttons, both with icon and with no icon versions, and the state, the states for each of those. Our next step is to select all of these, click on the drop down in the components icon and create multiple components and then combine as variant. If at this point you're asking the utility of having these master components, let's say at some point you're gonna need that right icon we, we spoke about, you can just simply go ahead and duplicate this and you can see all of the children of this main component will have it and you're not gonna have to go component by component adding this icon. So that's the utility. This is especially useful when you have bigger and more complex components because editing a bunch of them will take a lot of time and this makes it like super easy and centralizes all the edits in a single master component. I'm gonna delete this. And now we're gonna define the properties of our variants. The first thing we're gonna separate is the primary button for, from the secondary one. So you can hold control, select all of these, and you're gonna rename this property one to primary because we only have primary and secondary that's basically a boolean choice which is on or off i'm just gonna name the property primary so it's primary when it's on and it's secondary when it's off so for this for this first half i have i have selected i'm gonna name it on or you can name it on or true or yes and for the second half i'm gonna name it off And let me grab an instance of this to demonstrate. So the first thing we defined is this toggle button, which if you switch off, it's going to turn it into a secondary. If you switch on, it's going to turn it into a primary. I'm going to keep this to demonstrate all the other properties. Um, the, next, the next thing I'm going to define is if it has an icon or it doesn't. So I'm going to click on the outline of the component and I'm going to click on... So because I set the default value to yes, all of them are, are currently set to have an icon or to yes. But I'm going to manually grab the ones that do not have an icon and change the variant to no. And you can now see I have another toggle in my... I have another toggle in my component which I can turn on and off. And finally, we're gonna define all our button states. So again, I'm gonna click on the outline of the component. I'm gonna add a new property named state. I'm gonna make it active 
the default state will be named active so it's gonna set all the values to active but now I'm gonna manually go through each of them um, labeling them correctly so this first this first row is actually the active one so I'm gonna leave it as it is I'm gonna pick the second row and name it over I'm gonna pick the third row name it pre pressed and finally the last row I'm gonna name it disabled you can see the whole time I, I had this this warning message which said some of the values are conflicting but once I finish defining the, this this means that some of them some of the variants have the same value so it's not gonna so figma doesn't recognize which one of those uh, you want to actually be displayed uh, so each one of these values has to have different combinations of the properties you gave them but once I click I tap enter and define this final property it's gonna disappear because everything is correctly defined and each one of these has a different combination of properties so for that final one you see it's not a toggle because the toggle only works for boolean meaning on or off type of, of properties but this one I defined four different properties it and for that case it creates a drop down menu so you can see I can pick any of these combinations for it to be active hover state and I want it to be for example hover but the secondary button and without a and without a left icon so now I have access to all of my variants through this very simple menu you can also go ahead and prototype this to check how the hover and press states work uh, so to do that it's very simple you just go to the prototype tab so let's prototype the primary version with an icon so to do that we're gonna directly select this one we're gonna connect it with the hover base version and change it from on click to while hovering make that as part animation now let's connect the hover version with the pressed let's switch from on click to while pressing and we should be good let's grab this instance Let's create, let's create a separate frame for the prototype, bring our instance to here, select the frame, go to a prototype tab, click on flow starting point and we can preview our prototype. So as you can see when my mouse is over the button it will display the hover state and when I'm holding my click it will display the pressed state. And that's it for today's tutorial guys. I wanted to do this quick video because I know buttons is one of the main things and some of you have been asking for this one in particular. So if you enjoyed the video leave a like, if you got some value out of it and you want to keep up with the channel subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.